welcome to Glass of Bubbly's Pick of the Best. I'm Oliver Walkie and I'm here with Christopher Walkie. Today we are showcasing two fantastic Brut Nature sparkling wines, pairing them off together to see which one can take this trophy. Sounds good. And one from Slovenia, one from Europe, mm -hmm. one from Africa, South Africa. So, And we've got, this one is in fact a Brut Nature. That one is... This one, it says Ultra Brut, Ultra Brut, which does mean Brut Nature. Brut Nature. So more or less the same, we're looking at lower sugar amounts, zero uh, to three grams yeah. per litre there. So compared to what the standard is, is the Brut, which would be around three to 11 or 12. I should know that. But around about, so it's got more sugar in. This is much less. But what we're also going to do is pair it with some food. We've got mini pizzas there. Oliver's prepared some crackers there with a nice bit of salmon, a smoked salmon with some creamy cheese on top and herbs. So, well, that sounds nice. So, what do we do here? Remind me from last time, I can't remember. Right, well, yes, this is our second pick of the best, and we sort of compare, well, sort of battle it out. We're in different, different categories to see which one takes home the trophy. So one for aromas, we're going to go for the aromas and see which wins out of the two. Well, I have a list here. Oh, we first list. start with the label. We'll go for the oh, capsule okay. next. The colour, the bubbles, aroma, flavour, and then the last one we'll do at the end. Oh, that's quite intensive, isn't it? We're really giving them a going over here. So the bottle here, I mean... The shape of bottle here from, from the Rigolski, uh, they've got their lovely embossed logo on there, on the glass. So mm. it feels more expensive, and I like the black and the gold, and the minimalistic kind of wording on the, on the front label for me. Looks good. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But the, the shape of the I bottle. I like the shield effect on the red. Definitely. The shield effect in this does stand out and bring my eye to this bottle, but the, the embossed... Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what bird that is. It looks like a stalk to me, but I don't want to offend anybody. I'll say it looks like a stalk. Uh, their logo's on there. It it looks the part, but I, I do like always like the Graham Beck logo. Um, maybe because I like the Graham Beck name, you know, you're in for quality. But I'm, I, I, I'm going to have to push to say they've got this over their Graham Beck. I'm going to have to say the same. That the colour scheme of black and the gold and sort of simplicity of goes the green does stand out. So first point goes to you. Goes with to the, me. With the Regons Goddess. Got it. Yeah. Do we what we looking at? So the next is capsule. The capsule. So capsule, I've got a proper capsule. Sometimes you get a plain capsule that would be black or silver or gold. But we've got capsules here with proper logos on. So yes. once again the Regons Goddess, they're Bird logo on the top. Ours has the Graham Beck logo, we have along with Graham Beck Method Cap Classic, which is the traditional method. So I'm going to pop it open. I'll do the same as we just did. They not have something decide. inside? Don't forget oh, with, yes, the, do. with the um, with the Graham Beck inside. So once you pour out foil off the commencement of your popping open the bottle of bubbly, they have wording inside which actually says celebrate what matters and that's really really strong there i don't have such a thing inside here from regards to reason, but i do have the capsule which i do like but that may edge it for me if that if that does count towards yeah towards the capsule then that but i think the capsule is better i think there's, there's more information on the, on the capsule here the logo uh, we collect capsules we've got absolute tons of them here um so i will go for the grand bed so i'll Likewise. You, you take on that one. I'm desperately dying to pour some. So, yes, we do yours first. we do this first? We'll do the Regonce Gross first. There we go. So, let's just do the. So, we'll be looking at the colour and the bubbles. The colour and the bubbles. So, this sort of has a. Nice golden yellow colour. Golden yellow colour there. Very clean. Very clean and clear. Nice amount of bubbles. Yes. Um, which kind of relax down, disappear, and then now we've got the very tiny, delicate bubbles in the glass. So small, finer bubbles usually will give you, you know, the, the note of that is the wine's going to be good quality. It still has the, the rim of bubbles around the edge as well. It does. Mm -hmm. I do like the colour. I must say, the, the colour is a very warming colour, nice warmer yellow over anything bright or clear. But certainly very tiny pearly, very small streams of bubbles hitting the top. 
Nice stack. Very good. So we're going to have to remember that and then come back and do the do it again with the grand back. So let's go. Are we doing aromas now? We are doing. Yep. Yes, the aroma. Aroma is really good. Yellow stone fruits, citrus, a touch of floral, minerals. Yeah. I've got like white chalky cheese, very dry white cheese. Yeah, I do. I smell the same as you in that. There's also something as a candy, yellow candy maybe, or even edging towards a tropical kind of jelly candy. Like a, a jellyfied pineapple. Yeah, something like that. I think you can get sometimes a packet of so that kind of mm -hmm. glazed pineapple. Really good, very well, very welcoming. You doesn't you're not thinking it's gonna be dry tasting, which is obviously this is with the brute that you're thinking this is gonna be a brute, there's a little bit of sugar in there when you're gonna taste this. Let's do this, let's do those flavours. It's deep, it's intensive, an initial burst of toastiness that suddenly is overtaken by stronger, deeper citrus flavours in there. I'm also so getting some pastry. Pastry, yeah, but well, I've got that initially. Now you're getting pastry mid length. Also, things like peach and maybe like green apple skins, as well as apple skins more, more than the flesh or fruits. It does take on a more of a, a zesty taste, but it's not. It's not the the harsh mm. harsh kind. It's no, it's not. It's not too dry, as in what you'd expect from a brut nature. It's still got an element of natural sugars coming in from from the wine, but ultimately it is dry tasting. But it's not too dry, and I like that style. Yeah, for me, it does it takes on, as you said, peach, but also a bit of a pastry, like a tart sort yeah. of character. Yeah, a glaze mm. kind of pastry, lemon pastry in there. But it, it's a really quality fine wine. This is a vintage, and this vintage is two thousand and eight, so that's fourteen years already. But it's still tasting wonderful and many years of age left in this wine. So good start, good. Let's go over to the Grand Beck. Let's go to Grand Beck. Also a vintage, 2016. 16, so okay, 16 touch younger. So we'll go again for the the colour and the bubbles. Similar kind of very similar, mm -hmm. touch lighter. It's a touch lighter, but it's a very similar colour. But the bubbles are a little bit bigger when first poured compared to mm -hmm. the Rigolski Litzer and bigger around the rim of the glass yeah. and then when they disappear back the bubbles are slightly bigger compared to the Rigolski Litzer so not much and we're being very very picky here but Don't I would say the, the bubbles are a, a, a touch bigger lively not too many bubbles but it looks lovely when you look down into the glass you see those bubbles come up look lovely so I'd say that for me the bubbles go just adds it I would say with the yeah. bubbles so and also the color the color I would I'll be inclined to go with the Rigolski it's a, but that's personal choice I prefer that darker tone of yellow as opposed to the lighter tone but there's not much in it there isn't much in it but just as well I'd say the Rigolski Rigolski it's. as well so now we go on to the aroma that smells very good. Yeah, it's got more of that uh, yeasty, lightly toasted bread. There is, I'm also getting seashells. Are you getting anything about seashells? A touch there of saline. There is that touch of saline, Oyster salty shells. sea air character. But nice deep yellow pastry, as you said, Oliver, pastry notes. Um, something else, I don't know if it's like a toast, a burnt kind of herbaceous character there. It's, it's, it's weird as it sounds. Um, there is an element of that, but although this nose is good, I think this just edges it for me. I think the Grand Beck edged it. What do you think? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely getting more of that seashell character on the aroma now. Lovely seashell, also mm. like that oyster shell as, oyster as shell. well. So I would go with this. I would say that the, the quality of the aroma, although it is very close. We can't pick on on necessarily which ones. It's all preference. When it comes to any wine judging, it's down to the judge. 
Yes, certain judges will have a kind of main core criteria of which they will judge weight on, but when it comes to higher point scoring or being very picky, then it's down to each judge's individual wine tasting experience, their preferences, etc., etc. Now, for me, like we hit here, we're more or less agreeing on things. We've tasted yeah. so many wines together. This wine is, is really, really good on the nose. All the qualities you'd expect of a fairly well-aged uh, traditional method wine, but this being a little bit younger, it still has a little bit of way to go, I still feel, but I think this is going to be even better when it's further aged. And I prefer the aromas, the complexity of the Brown Beck compared to the Rodolski Litz. That is also def definitely another thing to really think about, is whether this has a better aging potential as well. It's a completely different... It's a different, different subject. Subject to... Different subject, because this one obviously is 2008. The winemaker... The winery will give you an indication of when's best to enjoy that wine. Normally, say a prosecco when it comes out in shot, they say drink it within the, within that one year. Uh, with regards to champagne, you can keep for a little bit longer, and vintages you can. Sometimes it's down to choice. You can experiment and keep something for for a while. But this one here is fourteen years. I don't know how long this was remained in the bottle on the lees, but nonetheless, this is a fourteen year old wine that performed brilliantly but maybe in 10 years it's kaput or it's up there somewhere even higher and maybe we're not giving the grand back the perfect opportunity because it's still a young young compared to the Rigon's Grits. I think in my personal opinion I think the Rigon's Grits is a little bit more well crafted but the grain back has more to explore for me. I think that's nicely put. I think that's perfect. Actually, I would, go, I would say that. It's very true. This is all of the qualities that you'd want. The Rigonsky Ritz a fantastic quality. This is is more in the exciting, innovative mode. There's lots to explore. This keeps you interested. This is top quality, but this has got something, an edge to it. So it's kind of like an entrepreneur against the master here, that kind of thing. I would go for the Grombeck, me personally, for the aromas, because I'm getting tropical now. It's, uh, are we judging on our personal opinions, or which one? Well, what I think, think we should do, um, we should do it on our personal opinions. On our yeah. personal yeah, yeah. Opinion. okay, then I would go for the Grombeck as well. Yeah, okay, so that's Grombeck, so I think we're three on this and two for Grombeck, aren't we? So we, we are we are three on the Regants and two on the Grand Bay. Yeah. So let's do the so. tasting. Hmm. I'm gonna put a bit more in it. We've been swirling that around a bit and the bubbles have gone. You wanna try any more? I'll try a bit more, but initially that is a really good, nice and yeah. enjoyable yeah. place. It is really good. Hmm. Yes, sir. Again, it's dry, plenty of acidity to this one, very low sugar, what you'd expect from a brute, a nature ultra brute. Hasn't got the kind of rounded edges and the fruit expression that we see with the Grugonska. It's a different wine, different terroir, country, grapes, etc. But I think this would age well. I think more, more is to come from this wine. But on the tasting, it's very close. I would go with the Rigolta Ritz personally, just for the quality. Yeah, I think this one could pair better with food, but we'll I see uh, yeah. in a moment. But I think the Rigolta Goris was just a bit more complete on the on the palate. I agree. So I give yeah. it to the Rigolta as well. So before we go to the food pairing, the sort of the added extra is if we have been to any other wineries. There we go. But this is always going to be a disadvantage, isn't it, really? Well, yes. not so much, I suppose, for the wines in question. I've never been to Africa. I've certainly never been to Grand Beck then, because they're in Africa, down the south part. But I have been to Rigonska Ditsa. Um, so I know the winery, I know the winemaker, I know the family. Um, over there, all the people that work together, I call them the family, on, on the brand up there on the northern parts of, of um, Slovenia, on the border with Austria. Um, and we know them very well because they come to our wards and they come to our tasting. So we were very familiar with Rigolskovica. So yes, I've been to Rigolskovica in other words. And I haven't been to any, so an added point goes to Rigolsk. Rigolsk. 
So we're gonna do the food pairings, we? Yes. Let's do the let's do a pizza. Start with a pizza. So these are the kind of foods that could go with a, a brut nature dry up style wine, something like a greasier small pizza, which is a canopy size that we've got here. And then the, the, the brut nature comes in to cleanse the palate nicely. Let's just do the ground beef. Good at cutting through. Mm -hmm. Not too bad at all. You can try to add a touch more of the ground bit. It does, it does, um, it decreases the greasiness but it doesn't completely get rid of it. It, it, it does do quite a good job of getting rid of the greasiness for me. Okay. And, and the flavours were still there. More the pastry, the base of the pizza was coming through. Um, it did get rid of the greasiness for me on that, that initial burst. Yeah. I found it that way. So for me, that means it's a good pairing. Okay, Basically. let's um, move on to what we have here is a cracker with uh, salmon, creamy cheese, and herbs. There you go for that. Sounds good. Hmm. Really good. That works very well with the cheese. Wow. Really good pairing. Once again, palate cleansing, but there's quite a, 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 a lot of flavours packed into this small little cracker. Um, so I, I think we get the best of both there. We get a nice refreshing burst from the ground back there. Um, we've got all the herb, all the creamy cheese, and the, the, the kind of the, the savouriness from, from the salmon still coming through. But the palate's cleansed. But the wine does die down, so mid length wine experience is gone. And the food lasts, which is good. You get that short, sharp burst, the palate cleanse, and then the food takes over. Yeah, I was much more pleased with that pairing over the pizza. I wasn't I too keen on the pizza, but it was a very nice balance of the sparkling wine and the cracker flavours with the cheese and the salmon still shining through. So that sounds good, nice. isn't it? There we go. So we're going to repeat this now with the Rigolti Pizza. So let's do the pizza. Pizza with the Rigolti Pizza. strange flavour. Let it reacting with the, with the pastry there. It's a strange one. It's, it's going all over the place in the palate. It's with wine, pizza, wine, pizza, wine, pizza, wine, pizza, wine, pizza. That kind of a effect in the palate. Yeah. Nothing. To, they're, they're challenging each other. Nobody's winning. But okay, okay. Nothing brilliant, but okay. I think there's more a more unique and um, talkable um, conversation. Conversation. Yeah. There was much, uh, much more citrus, yellow citrus mm. flavors added to the to the pizza. I still got cheese and the and the pastry from the um, pizza, but it was a uh, it was okay. It was okay. It was it was interesting. It was interesting. I just I do like that way that the food and the wine was just going up and down in the palate. Should we try the last yeah. one, which is the salmon uh, canapé with regards to it? Okay. For me, the Rigonti Goddess was a little bit overpowering. Um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, it brings out the, the salmon a bit more, but it brings out a salty, saline character to the salmon, almost as if I'm having an oyster. So mm -hmm. it's okay, it's good, it's nothing to write home about. I mean, personally, I think the best here is the Grand Beck. I think from what we've just tasted it, especially with the, with the salmon and the way it reacted with the cheese, that's good. I think for a wine like the Rigolti Kavitsi, if you don't mind me saying, would be to have on its own, or very particular dish, maybe they've got a chef that can advise, but this would be a stand alone, something to relax with, a nice big bowl glass that you can sit there and just enjoy. Whereas this is young still, those six years old, but fresh, and it's vital, vitalizing 
the, the, the palate and the whole food pairing experience much better than with we've got experience. So with the pizza you would choose? With the pizza I would... Because for me I would edge mm. towards the Gonzgaris because that sort of... Mm. I would say yeah, I would go with the pizza, I would put the Rigolska the Itza, but with the salmon definitely the brown back for me. Yeah, the salmon yeah. cheese cracker would be the brown back as well. So I just calculate these scores here. But also um, to mention is that your Rigolska won a gold medal in the gold. classic and elegant category. Gold medal for Rigolska Itza. My brain back 2016 won a silver medal in the pastries delight category. Pastry, so there we go. So that's when you, you experience the pastries and all of that. Um, so that's good. This which one was this? Which was the this gold? was classic and elegant. Classic and elegant. There we go. So I didn't realise that. So that's why I wanted to have it in a big bowl glass and sit and relax to a nice glass of this. Even when it starts to reach the room temperature, it's still fine to enjoy. So good. Okay, I have the scores, and it is a six. Free finish. So it's not as close as our first one that we did, the first pick of the best. No. But the six goes to Rigons Goriska. Rigons Goriska, so, so Slovenia against uh, South Africa, and Slovenia has taken home the trophy. But they're both monster labels, monster quality wines from two fantastic growing regions. Slovenia, close to my heart, Slovenia, I've been there quite a few times, a lovely place. But also the Method Cap Classic, the MCC, the South African Bubbly, and there's amazing labels to explore there too. So there we go. So as Oliver said, victory for Rigolski Ritz on my side. I think I might have won the last one, didn't I? I think I did. Did you? Oh, I think I did, he said. And there we go. Well, this time it's me. So congratulations, Rigolski Ritz. And until next time, enjoy the fizz. <laughs>